excited to find out what the latest innovative technology that has the potential to change the shrimp farming business is? You've come to the right place. Dr. Faye Hamad and Dr. Poo Balan Ganesan are promoting microbubble technology, which they believe has the potential to transform fish farming in underdeveloped nations. Keep watching to find out more. Let's dive into aquaculture. Fish farming may be dated back to between 3,000 and 4,000 years ago in some form, although there hasn't been a significant development in aquaculture in recent decades. The Blue Revolution has resulted in a massive increase in fish farming throughout the world, with the number of farmed fish currently exceeding the amount of farmed beef. Aquaculture, on the other hand, has its own set of issues that has long been recognized to have a harmful influence on the environment, particularly in poor nations, with existing techniques creating pollution from chemicals and pesticides. Aquaculture in Malaysia has resulted in the widespread devastation of mangroves, which are critical habitats for biodiversity. Technological advances are critical for overcoming some of aquaculture's problems. Dr. Faik Hamad recognizes this problem and cooperated with Dr. Pubalang Ganesan of the University of Malaya in Kuala Lumpur to find a solution. Together, the two were able to build a new method that would address issues encountered by shrimp farmers in Malaysia with the help of 93,000 euro financing from the Newton Fund. What exactly is microbubble technology and why do we need it? They set out to investigate how the use of a microbubble aeration system could be a potential new direction for shrimp aquaculture, lowering costs increasing productivity, improving land use efficiency, reducing energy requirements and the environmental impact of shrimp farming, and putting the industry on a more sustainable footing both economically and environmentally. The technology uses a generator to create small bubbles that release free radicals and enhance dissolved oxygen levels in water. Cleaning the water of waste products and hazardous microorganisms and increasing production for farmed finfish and shellfish. The microbubble aeration method employs naturally drawn air, which reduces the energy and maintenance expenses associated with compressed air generation. The generator produces tiny bubbles that emit free radicals OH ions, with an oxidation reduction potential ORP, of 1.6 V. The little bubbles also boost the dissolved oxygen in the water, which improves seafood yield. Micro bubbles have the ability to disinfect water by releasing free radicals into it. This is accomplished through detoxification and destruction of organic contaminants. The goal of using this technique was to promote shrimp development and and encourage the circulation of beneficial bacteria known as bioflat, all while running the same or lower energy needs. Teesside University is utilizing Comfer, a free innovation brokerage platform run by the National Center for Universities and Business, the NCUB, to recruit business partners to assist in providing proof of concept. Their research discovered that using microbubbles can successfully aid to boost the development rate of shrimps and other aquaculture species, including giant freshwater prawns, while lowering the quantity of clean water required to run aquaculture facilities. What impact will microbubbles have on the industry? Microbubble technology provides a safer, chemical-free, and low-energy alternative to existing water disinfection methods, and we are thrilled that developing countries will be able to access this game-changing technology. Adoption barriers are low, and operating costs are expected to be lower than existing solutions. This pioneering technology is extremely important since its role in cleaning water of harmful microorganisms implies that it can give a safer, chemical-free alternative to disinfectants. Furthermore, the project's adaptability allows for this technology to be implemented in a variety of crucial areas where water is vital to industrial operations. This encompasses the fields of health, agriculture, and aquaculture. Most recently, Dr. Hamad was part of a time-funded study concentrating on possibilities of microbubble technology in water disinfection, and the generator is already being tested for the presence of E. coli in polluted water. Dr. Hamad and Dr. Pu Balan are looking forward to witnessing the effects of their new system as they attempt to improve industry practices through more effective and sustainable methods to farming and food production. Now, from the innovators. Dr. Faye Hamad, Associate Professor in Engineering at Teesside University, believes that this research is extremely important because it aims to decrease the environmental and health-related repercussions of wastewater, which will have game-changing effects for the aquaculture industry. Water is crucial to everything from agricultural to industrial activities, as the issue of harmful microorganisms grows more widespread, microbubble aeration technology has the ability to address this issue in a sustainable and safe manner. He also added that they were thrilled to be working with Confer, who has made it easy for them to connect with a network of thousands of businesses. Dr. Pu Ganesan, Associate Professor of Engineering at the University of Malaya, stated that microbubble aeration has been studied for aquaculture species such as marine white shrimp and giant freshwater prawns at the University of Malaya in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The study
studies demonstrated considerable improvements in the species development, which is by around 30%, and a reduction in the food conversion ratio. Now, in other news, Norway's seafood exports. Norway's seafood exports started out on a high note last month, with their best January on record. The sum for January was NOK 10.3 billion, or 850 million euro, a 26% increase over the same month last year. Salmon was once again the key driver, contributing for 70% of total export value. Last month, the value of salmon jumped by NOK 2.1 billion, or 41%, to NOK 7.2 billion, or 600 million euro. According to Renate Larsen, CEO of the Norwegian Seafood Council, restaurant openings in regions such as Asia and North America are driving the increase in salmon exports, particularly the fresh kind. However, France is emerging as Norway's greatest growing market for pink fish, with its value increasing by NOK 262 million, almost 22 million euro. Trini Horn, the Seafood Council's French ambassador, stated that salmon is now being consumed in greater numbers both at home and in restaurants. Next, we have the European Marine Science Park. Mary Gujian, Cabinet Secretary for Rural Affairs and Islands in the Scottish Government, presided today online at the formal inauguration of the enlarged European Marine Science Park, EMSP, in Dunstafnage near Oban. Following a 2 million euro investment by the park's developer, Highlands and Islands Enterprise, the extra laboratory and office facilities have been established at Maylin House, which is part of the EMSP. According to HIE, the initiative was inspired by enterprises at the park seeking to extend their commercial activities. The new laboratory and offices were planned in collaboration with those firms, and the construction was completed by a local contractor, TSL Limit. Patogen AS, Tritonia Scientific Ltd, Ocean Ecology, Oceanium, and Shetland Business Ocean Kinetics, which has established new facilities in Argyle, are among the five firms that have expanded into the new workplace. Preparatory work is also underway for the development of three further buildings, one of which has already been awarded planning approval. Next, Atlantic Sapphire. Atlantic Sapphire, a land-based salmon grower, has reached an agreement with feed giant Scredding and algal oil experts Verimus to replace 25% of the fish oil content in its feed. Algal oil from Verimus will take the place of fish oil. The action advances Atlantic Sapphire's goal of eliminating marine elements from its aqua feed by 2025. ASC and MSC certified Verimus algal oil was created as a sustainable supply of both EPA and DHA omega-3 fatty acids, and it is used to augment or replace fish oil across the aquaculture value chain, from feed producer to retail. According to the business, the oil has the greatest potency, above 60%, available on the market. Atlantic Sapphire raises salmon at its RAS, Recirculating Aquaculture Systems, Blue House facility in Florida after a fire damaged its main RAS farm in Denmark last year. Blue Front Equity, a seafood investor, has paid an undisclosed price to acquire a 50% investment in Aquasafe, an inspection and certification company focusing on marine fish farming. Aquasafe, situated in Bergen, Norway, is a recognized inspection organization for producing certifications, mooring and site analysis, and component certificates. It also provides product certification for ocean-based fish farming components, such as mooring components, float collars, barges, nets, and service stations. Within land-based farming, the organization provides product certification of vessels, pipes, and hoses, as well as technical report delivery. Aquasafe has also just been recognized for the provision of environmental services. Sematec, Aquasafe's fully owned subsidiary, is also involved in the deal. Sematec is an independent testing and inspection organization that provides inspection, testing, verification, and technical services for materials used in the seafood industry that are made of plastic, steel, aluminum, or concrete. Sematec's product range includes wave breakers, which may protect ocean-based fish farms and ports from strong waves. Blue Front has not disclosed the specifics of the deal, which comprised a share issuance as well as the acquisition of shares from existing owners. Next, Gunnar Nielsen, the former chief financial officer of the Feroz fish farmer Bakafrost, has been recruited to a similar role with Salmar of Norway. Nielsen, who starts his new job on April 1st, has vast experience in managerial roles in the fisheries, banking, industrial, and auditing sectors. He is also well-versed in operations such as board work, financial management, porting, and financial communication in publicly traded companies. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think the new microbubble technology could revolutionize the aquaculture industry? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.